Welcome to another Scott Tanner Violin Video, where I create videos to help you become a more successful violin student. And if you get a chance, jump over to my YouTube channel, Scott Tanner Violin, where you'll find more violin videos. This training video is all about Allegretto from Suzuki Book One. Allegretto represents the second piece in the Suzuki Violin Book One repertoire in the key of D major. So if you're ready to begin, Let's dig in. The first teaching point is the term allegretto, which means moderately quick and pretty lively, but not so much as allegro. The second teaching point is to learn the bow pattern before you start learning the notes. Here's a demonstration of the bow pattern. Another good teaching point is to review the D major scale before you begin playing this piece. And you could also incorporate the D major scale into the bow pattern, and that would sound like this. Unless you've played in orchestra or you have other playing experience, this will also be the first piece in the Suzuki book repertoire that includes use of the G string. The fifth teaching point includes the idea of being able to use a fourth finger on multiple occasions, which is a technique we've already started to develop on prior pieces. And the final teaching point is the use of accents, which we'll cover more in the bow articulation segment of this video. Now that we have reviewed the teaching points for this piece, let's continue with left hand technique. The first left hand technique is to jump the first finger from the D string to the G string. And that looks and sounds like this. Notice that my bow arm also moves at the same time and same direction as my finger. Let's take a look at that again, but at a different direction. The second left hand technique is to use the fourth finger while still leaving down first or second finger on the D string. A little exercise would look like this. And then eventually just take the third finger out. The final left hand technique is that of just independent fingerings, because up until this point, and very often still, we can play or find notes using fingerings that are already down on the fingerboard. But independent fingerings require us to just move our fingers more independently from each other with the expectation still that we can play the notes in tune. Let's talk about the right hand technique for Allegretto. And one of the fun things about Allegretto is the use of accents. An accent is simply a bow articulation where we apply a little bit more weight to the first note and then release that weight as we pull the bow up or in the down bow direction. It doesn't require a lot of weight at all from the arm into the bow to be able to get that nice accent sound. Watch again and see how that looks from another angle. Allegretto as a second teaching point for the right hand also has what we call just a recover or a circle back. And we're gonna treat this similar to how we've done this in the past with other pieces where we're just gonna circle back to the balance point. Measure 11 and 12 have a retard along with a decrescendo that moves into a fermata. You may want to also practice this as a preview. I'll demonstrate those few notes for you here. We are now ready to move into the practice segment of this video, which is just a slow tempo that you'll be able to stay caught up with me.
You might also want to watch the screen up here while you're playing along so that you can see the fingerings and other things I might want to tell you as we're playing through this. I would also encourage you to continue to practice with this part of the video until you can play it without any mistakes. Another option is to go to my Allegretto Practice Tempo Repeated video where you'll be able to play it with me five times in a row without having to continually repeat this section of the video. I'll begin this practice segment of Allegretto with an introduction. Well, how did that go? Were you able to play through it with me all the way through without mistakes? If not, continue to repeat this segment of the video or go over to my other video, the practice tempo repeated five times in a row to be able to get lots and lots of practice on that. Otherwise, let's move on to the performance tempo, a tempo that would be appropriate for a recital. And again, you always have the option to slow this part of the video down if you need to by going to the settings wheel found in the lower right hand side of the video where you can adjust the playback speed. Here's the performance tempo of Allegretto with an introduction. How did that go? Were you able to get through the whole piece at that tempo without any mistakes? If so, congratulations. You're ready to move on to the next piece in the Suzuki Violin repertoire, Andantino. And if you need to continue practicing that performance tempo before you move on to Andantino, I also have a video on that. And it repeats up to five times without having to go back and replay that segment of the video. In the meantime, keep your commitment to practice daily. And I hope to see you practicing with me on another video real soon. Strains out.